Hey guys, I know I haven't recorded any uh, reaction videos in a while, and the reason for that is because Asmon God is banned. And because he's not producing content, I have nothing to leech from. <clears throat> That's not true at all. That was a, just a joke. The reality is that, well, yes, I do react to a lot of his content because uh, uh, he speaks about stuff that deeply resonate with me most of the time. Um, the gaming industry is actually quite dead at the moment, with only the failures from Unknown Nine Awakening, um, Dragon Veil, Dragon Age Veil Guard, and uh, Ubisoft as a whole being the only points of discourse going on this month. Um, there's not a lot of good games coming out, and there's not a lot to talk about. So Asmon was actually pretty lucky to get banned when um, we're having a slow games month, even though I'm pretty sure he's already desperate to come back. In any case, um, I, th I feel like this month has shifted its focus a lot to politics and is in more, to be more specific to the US presidential election in general. I don't even know if games stopped um, being released because of that or not. But yeah, uh, there's a massive focus shift to that. And um, the only exception that I see to that happening is what's going on at Twitch. More specifically, ever since Asma got banned, there was a lot of other developments on Twitch. And that's what this video is going to be about. So let's take a look at it. What do you think of when someone mentions the website Twitch.tv? Maybe you think of your favorite streamer. Maybe you think of your favorite esports. Um, by the way, that was uh, Dr. Disrespect recording inside of a bathroom. This is the uh, Concord, which obviously sucks. This game, and maybe, just maybe, you think of a half-naked woman in a kiddie pool in... Yeah, this is another controversy which he's gonna uh, speak about in just a moment. About how VTubers can no longer show their hips, but uh, cam girls can basically just use a bikini as long as they have uh, even an empty... Uh, Kitty pool inside of a inside of the the room they're recording in. Indoors. Regardless of what your answer is, I'm sure there's some amazing memories tied to it. But when Indeed. I think of Twitch, I think of a grossly mismanaged circus. A circus that is still not profitable after almost 17 years. Of Holy existence. crap! Yes, they haven't had one single profitable year ever since they were created back in 2007. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. What Twitch is also known for is their complete and utter inconsistency and lack of transparency when it comes to their bans Absolutely. in regards to their trust and safety team. Yeah. They show very, and I mean very clear favoritism to some streamers while showing clear malicious intent with other streamers. So um, <clears throat> here's the general opinion about Twitch, and that's not just me saying, that's what's uh, coming out more and more. Uh, they are extremely progressive, and if uh, anyone that's like progressive with them or uh, a woman, because they're also feminists, gets a lot of uh, benefits when it comes to uh, punishments, when, as if you're otherwise a guy, or if you're right-leaning, you're going to have like the worst punishments possible. And Twitch has had, has, has had this bias for ever since its creation, really, and uh, people are bringing that more, more up to question as, as things go along. This has been going on since the website's inception. People were hoping that this weird, immature culture of favoritism would go away slowly after Amazon had acquired the website back in 2014 for $970 million. But as you might have guessed, <laughs> things only got worse. Look, as someone who's been watching Twitch for almost 10 years now, I can sit here and make a one-hour video of the inconsistencies when it comes to bans and punishments on the platform. But... Yeah, I started on Twitch as a viewer on 2017, and I started streaming on 2020. So a lot of the controversies he's gonna mention, I've, I've actually uh, followed. I'll just show you a couple, because it'll be enough for you to understand why I wouldn't trust a single Twitch employee to put the fries in the bag at a McDonald's. In 2020, the streamer Alinity was dancing on stream. She showed her nipple by mistake. That's considered adult content. In any case, she got banned for one day. Cool. In the same year, 2020, a well-known streamer by the name of Pokimane, who I'm sure you've heard of, 
opened up a hub link, okay? One of the biggest adult video websites showing uh -oh. what was on the front page. Yes, many videos of people getting penetrated. She said it was an accident. In the end, she, she got a slap got in the wrist. A warning from Twitch, okay? Not even a ban or anything. Yeah, I remember an that. Email saying that, hey, what you did was kind of bad. Please don't do it again. In that same year, yes, I don't know what happened in 2020 in particular. Forsen, a very well known streamer, clicked on an Imgur link and. Bro, this was insane. This was the talk of Twitter for like a, an entire year. Uh, there were so many gifts made out of out of a uh, forcing with a uh, uh, a horse face. Call him horsing. I think he even has like uh, emojis on his channel of horsing because of what happened. And this guy got banned for over a month for opening a GIF by mistake. It wasn't even his fault. So Pokimane opens, you know, a, a, a corn hub straight up on stream, actually opens it, and there's like tons of action going on. This guy opens a GIF by because someone uh, made him do it, and he got over a month banned. And he was so made fun of. I uh, feel so sorry for him. I don't think he ever lived. He ever outlived that that the drama that happened that that year. Miss Chat, something he does all the time. What he didn't know though was that it was a GIF. It started off as an image of a meme and then yep. transitioned into a woman sucking on a horse sausage. Ooh. Yes, you heard that right. A horse sausage. I can't go into more detail. We're on YouTube. True. Regardless though, it wasn't intentional. He had no idea. It was a troll in chat. What happened? He got banned indefinitely. Yes, forever, yes, forever with no date of an unban. Only getting his ban reversed after more than a month. That is now true. I remember out. that. A streamer was getting back shots live on stream while replying to chat. This went on for multiple minutes at videos of people getting penetrated. She said it was an accident. I don't know what the video called back. I didn't do that on purpose. There is no pattern. Just clear favoritism and malice towards specific streamers. This is why for a long time, no one could take the platform seriously. In fact, for a long time... Okay, so not only did we have this incident of this girl doing this, we also had on the same year, I think it was only week support, another girl that actually uh, opened, the, opened the lips of her genitals directly to the camera. And she said... She was drunk and thought she was actually re recording for OnlyFans and not live on Twitch. She also got a three-day ban. So both of those ladies doing that, this kind of like explicit content got three-day bans, okay? Just to give you a frame of reference of why people think Twitch is completely dominated by, you know, feminists and people that uh, defend pro pro progressives and women with everything that they got this was insane at the time this uh made nobody ever trust twitch ever again when it when it comes to bands there is no pattern just clear favoritism and malice towards true specific streamers. true this is why for a long time no one could take the platform seriously in fact for a long time there was this <clears> running <throat> joke the head of partnerships at twitch who has been there for over a decade even after amazon buying the company was a man called Hassan Bukhari. People would joke that female streamers got special treatment due to Hassan. Those jokes became rumors and those rumors became out of control. Uh -oh. Especially with all the terrible decisions Twitch was making at the time. This prompted Hassan to tweet this in June of 2019 saying, I do not have anything to do with Twitch suspensions or moderation actions. If you or your friend needs help in this regard, please see this link. I cannot do anything about suspensions or unsuspending you, pinning tweet making many feel sorry for him that, hey man, maybe these jokes are getting out of hand. Well, <laughs> these jokes were not crazy enough because not even a year after this, in 2020, Twitch fired Hassan Bukhari over abuse of power. As the Me Too movement was going on, people were leaking messages of Hassan not only asking for these inappropriate favors from female creators, but also showing them off to his friends. There was a certain instance Damn. where he received nudes from a certain female Twitch streamer and the first thing he did was join a voice chat with his friends and show it off saying, Oh my God, guys, I just received their boobs. Oh my God, check this out. This man was the head of partnerships, okay? He had the ability to give you partner if you wanted to as well, which he definitely did if you sent him inappropriate images as a female creator. And bear in mind. Bro, 2020 was crazy. 
2020 was absolutely crazy with how many scandals Twitch had. It was insane. It, you couldn't open Twitter like once a week without running into a scandal. It was insane. It was one after the other. I think it was because everybody was at home and everybody was using Twitch a lot more because of COVID. But it was just crazy. It was a crazy year for Twitch. Absolutely. This was six years after Amazon had dished almost a billion dollars to acquire the website. This showed us that even after all these years, Twitch had the organizational structure of a startup. Except it only had the negative aspects of a startup True. with no positives. True. Anything from favoritism to cringy ass bro culture to unprofessionalism and a lot. I mean, a lot of moments where they were just winging it. Many Absolutely. And keep in mind that this didn't change at all. We're in 2024 and this is exactly the same right now. He's going to get to it, I'm sure. Uh, I haven't watched the video yet. I, I, it's not pre-watched. But yeah, this is definitely uh, a, what, what, goes, what goes on with Twitch nowadays. Favoritism this didn't change at all. Now they're banning VTubers for showing their hips while they were, you know, allowing that kind of stuff on the site that he just mentioned that I, I won't repeat, you know, to try and keep the video as clean as possible. But yeah, uh, like the amount of favoritism on Twitch is insane. And they especially hate VTubers for some reason. Many people place the blame on Emmett Shear, one of the original five co-founders of Twitch.tv, or Justin.tv as it was known before the name change. The public perceived Emmett as someone who had zero control over the company, as someone who was more concerned with network engineering, with the website's infrastructure, rather than its culture and trust and safety policies. After resigning in March of 2023, people were hoping that his successor would finally be able to steer yeah. Twitch in the right direction and make it go from unprofessional frat club to an actual professional functioning company. True. And not only that, but also people were hoping that Twitch would finally give more discoverability to small creators, small streamers in general. I was one of them uh, because this guy um, didn't really do anything. He didn't interact with streamers at all. Um, he was completely living in his, or, his own isolated world. So we expected a lot of good changes once he got out and expected Dan Clancy to revolutionize Twitch in a way that it would benefit small creators and that he would end favoritism and make a site that would be more um, fair and usable by everyone. And it turned out the way it did. So, yeah. Who is a subsidiary of Amazon. The person replacing him as Twitch CEO was the person who used to be the president of Twitch, who is Dan Clancy. Someone who used to work at NASA and Google and somehow ended up at Twitch. From day one, he did his best to show everyone that he was the hip and cool CEO. Yeah. Someone who sought to understand streamers at a core and fundamental level to give them exactly what they want. He went on to do so many collabs with bigger streamers, smaller streamers, you name it, and even started streaming himself weekly on his Twitch channel really emphasizing the fact that he was here. And just like when Amazon was buying Twitch, people were yet again hopeful, optimistic, that this was finally going yeah, to I remember that. in the direction it so desperately needed to go to. But guys, <laughs> the website got infinitely worse. True. There was yet True. again a complete lack of direction. I'm sure you remember the whole fiasco that happened with the pools, hot tubs, and beaches category. Twitch yeah. simply did not know what it wanted to be or who to cater to. They would always keep revising their terms of service to the point where things don't really make much sense even by today's standards because things are not enforced equally. And they keep changing the regulations all the time, claiming they're trying to add clarity, when in reality they just keep changing it. And the reason why they keep changing it is because they will never tackle the, the elephant in the room, which is e-thoughts trying to sell their OnlyFans. So they keep creating new rules and regulations and going and dancing around the issue without ever addressing it. Like instead of just going around banning every single e thought selling their OnlyFans and getting rid of them and you know just making the website uh, consistent, they keep just dancing around the issue and creating new policies. Which, by the way, just creates them to just forces them to go through different methods to circumvent that, which are called metas. So basically Twitch has a new meta every month of how those porn girls manage to circumvent the Twitch bans to get their stuff out there.
and that has been going on for years now. Favoritism is still very much present. One of the biggest incidents on Twitch, just in general, because of how ridiculous it is, was in 2024, at the end of April. A True. streamer by the name of Denims on the left here said on stream that she would pay $30,000 to whoever made Asmongold disappear. That was insane. And by the way, this lady never got even punished for that. And Asmund was completely chill about it. He didn't even care. You know, he was like, ah, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a crap. She can do whatever, you know. And this is one of Hassan's minions. This is one of the of the Hassan minions that got banned now for a month recently. But yeah, I mean, Hassan and Scroonies can do whatever they want and Twitch does nothing against them at all. Like, they can do whatever. Twitch doesn't care. This lady basically put a price on his head, which is a crime, and she got away with zero. Nothing. Yes, I'm serious. This actually happened. She didn't say, hey guys, I'm just joking. Haha. <laughs> yep. No. She said it with a serious straight face like the one you're seeing right here. Yep. And unfortunately for Denims, we're not in the American Wild West of the late 1800s. You can't just put a bounty on someone's head like this. It's without exaggeration to say that this is a federal crime. Now, Twitch's terms of service say that violence on Twitch is taken seriously and is considered a zero tolerance violation. And all only if you're not one of Hassan's cronies or Hassan himself. If you're Hassan or his cronies, you can do whatever. Uh, he recently even posted on Twitter that he gets to break the rules. He literally says that on a message on Discord that got screenshotted and pasted on Twitter. He literally says. I get to break the rules. And we know that. I mean, everybody knows that. Uh, his cronies got banned, but he can still put uh, their pat Patreons as links on his chat so people can donate to them even though they're banned, which is basically banned circumvention. Um, and nothing is being done about that. Hassan and his cronies can do whatever. They only got banned because of a, a public panel that they did that was openly anti-Semitism. But other than that, they can do whatever, and they never get any punishment. All accounts associated with such activities on Twitch will be indefinitely suspended. And yet here she was calling for her fellow streamer Asmongold's assassination. You would think that Twitch would do something about this, right? Well, nope. <laughs> no. She didn't get banned, and she, she didn't even get a warning. Demons. Nothing. That's Dan Clancy's Twitch. I also need to mention the fact that very recently, in October of 2024, yep. Twitch made it illegal for VTubers to show their hips. Yes. This is brand new. Like, the reason why I'm forced to just show this part of my body is because I stream on Twitch. So if I if I try, if I try to show more of my model, like, if I go... Let, let me do this real quick. Like, if... No, no. If I do this and you can see my hips, I can get banned. Just by showing my hips, I'm banned. It's that simple. You can no longer show your hips on Twitch. It is illegal for a VTuber to show their hips. While uh, cam girls can just basically go bikini if they have an, an empty, not even full, pool in the same room as they're streaming. That is crazy. Virtual characters can't show their hips. Yet when you go to the pools, hot tubs, and beaches yep. category, you see this. May contain sexual themes. I assure you, buddy, they're showing way more than their hips. Some Absolutely. Some of them are twerking for subs, man. It's not even funny. All of this was to illustrate just how bad Twitch's reputation has become over the years. Sometimes it's hard to believe that a website like this is owned by Amazon or that they even paid a billion dollars for it. Nobody, nobody respects Twitch when it comes to bands. Like... Uh, nobody takes them seriously when it comes to enforcing policies because their 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 discrimination and their ability to ignore what, what some streamers do is just so on your face and so blatant that people just you know don't take them seriously. There's just no way to take them seriously by doing that. Like I don't know if changing the CEO will fix it. I think it's the entire department responsible for bans. Like the you know rules and regulation department, I think they're all biased towards Hassan and his cronies. They're all they mo all must be like very progressive, and that's why they they keep doing that. But like 
it really, really, really speaks bad about the company. It creates a terrible impression, and they're losing. I, I bet they're losing sponsors over this. There's no way they're not. But everything I mentioned so far has nothing to do with what's going on right now. This yeah. is something that is existential to Twitch as a company, its CEO, and even worse, its parent company, Amazon. You have some pretty big Jewish organizations calling Twitch anti-Semitic. Anything from the Times of Israel to the Jerusalem True. Post, the Anti-Defamation League reached out to Twitch directly, and now many are calling for the CEO's resignation. There's a website that um, like lists all of the... Uh, so-called crimes or uh, wrong wrongful doings of uh, Dan Clancy. There's a, a website made with all that information. There's a lot of people campaigning on Twitter about it because, like, it got into a point where it's just insane what they're what he's allowing to happen. And more and more, this the, like awareness has suddenly peaked about all that's going on in Twitch. And people before they would just you know complain but eat it and nowadays people are just furious and they're calling for his re resignation there's a huge movement going around right now it's a very nasty and highly political situation and i have no interest in taking any sides so let's try and talk about this in the most neutral objective way possible let's go this entire issue started with a clip you've no doubt seen already of Asmongold calling Palestinian culture inferior, saying that he's not sorry for everything that's been happening there. Which we already covered in the channel, by the way, so I won't go through everything I said um, when it comes to what Asmon said and my reaction to that, because you can find that video in the channel. I'm going to link it on the description, but yeah, I'm not going to go in th in into the same, like explanation of what I think that he said wrong and what I think he said right because that would just make this video way too long. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible. It kills people for their identity and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for and it is an inferior culture in all ways. That was the clip summed up. As you can see, though, it went absolutely viral on October 14th it did, yeah. when it happened, and it was the talk of the internet. Many people were calling on Twitch to ban him, especially since their Terms of Service talked about incidents like this specifically. This section in the Twitch Terms of Service is dedicated to protected groups. Anything that portrays a specific group as greedy or unintelligent... But because Asmongold is, is not on Hassan's group, he was banned for two weeks. Not even, like... Girls that have sex on camera get banned for more than three days. Yet, he's probably one of the biggest breadwinners on Twitch. He got banned for two weeks. Just for not being part of uh, Hassan's fan, fan club. Comparing groups to animals, insects, pets. Like, on my reaction video to what happened, I actually speak about this. What I think he said right, what I think he said wrong. But that I absolutely consider his punishment overdone. But... Twitch is just like that. Twitch just uh, doesn't care. They would just over overly punish anyone that is not part of the uh, the posse of Hassan. Pests, parasites, you name it. And one of them is content suggesting that protected group members are subhuman, inhuman, or impure. So of course, there was a strong sentiment that what he had said in that clip fell in that category. That's not yeah. to say that many weren't on his side. No, in fact, there were. Just like the current conflict between Israel and Palestine going on right now, this was a very divisive issue. There were mostly two main opinions about this. The first opinion seeing him as a monster, as someone who didn't care about people's suffering and would go as far as to call them inferior, showing his racist side. The second opinion saw him as a hero, someone who finally said the quiet part out loud, what a lot of people have been thinking. Regardless, as soon as his rant was done, Hassan Abi, a streamer on Twitch who happens to be a political commentator on the extreme left, this is an objective statement by the way. And then Clancy's little protected preferred streamer what? immediately called him on stream and tried his best to explain to him the situation of the whole palestine israel war and why he was being insensitive and wrong in his opinion after that stream asman gold did something extremely rare apologize he said looking back on it i was way too much of an asshole about the palestine thing which by the way he shouldn't have done okay and he knows he shouldn't have apologized even if he disagrees with what he did, he should have never apologized, okay? 
Because the moment you apologize, people will not, you know, be happy with your apology. They will just use your apology to shit even more on you. And he knows that. I've been watching Asmund since 2017, okay? I know that he knows that you shouldn't apologize, even if you know what you did is wrong. Because the people that are on social media will just use your apology to shit even more on you. So um, him doing this was not because he wanted to, it was because he was the public face of several companies. So he felt obligated to first apologize and then uh, stop being the public image of those companies. But like he knows that if he wasn't the public image of those companies, he wouldn't have apologized. And I would, I would have agreed with him not apologizing and just moving on because apologies do not fix things. They just make some worse on social media. My bad. Of course, no one deserves to have their life destroyed, even if they do things or have views I find regressive. You guys deserve more than me saying stupid shit like that. I'll do better. Yeah, um, just to sum up my other video, here's my opinion. They do absolutely have genocide baked into their laws. The Sharia law has genocide built into it. They do kill gay people. They do kill women that uh, are infidels in their marriage, unfaithful in their marriage. They do kill people, but because they kill people, they're not, they don't deserve to be genocided or to be called inferior. That was my general opinion. So I don't agree with Asmund saying they are inferior, they're inferior culture, but I do agree that um, they do have genocide baked into their laws. And I would never go to Palestine and I would never wear, fly a Pal Palestinian flag because um, they would kill me because I'm gay. So yeah, that's my general opinion. While I disagree with him uh, name calling them, um, what he said about their laws is true. And the fact is they do kill gay people. That is absolutely true. When it came to Twitter, many of the comments were not on his side. He was ratioed like there was no tomorrow. Well, folks, he said, my bad. I think that's a wrap. <laughs> Shortly afterwards, the consequences to what he had said truly started appearing. The streaming org he had co-founded by the name of OTK released a statement saying that we do not agree with anything that Asmongold has said, and that he will be stepping away from OTK and all of its affiliate companies such as Starforge, a PC building company, Mad Mushroom, a game development studio under OTK, and Mythic Talent, the talent agency he helped co-found. By the way, all of those companies, he no longer is the CEO or part of the board, but he's still an owner, so like... Uh, he gets to receive the dividends from, you know, owning the companies without having to uh, directly influence what happens within them. So he's basically no longer the CEO. He's no longer like the face of the companies that, that he used to be, which in turn gives him more freedom to say whatever is on his mind without being the public face of those companies, which uh, to be fair, he should have done a long time ago being a streamer, you know. Um, most streamers already do this. They don't, they're not uh, CEOs or face of the companies they own exactly so that if they do mess up and say something stupid one day, the companies do not suffer. By the way, fun fact, I'm in this agency. I love Mythic Talent. They're really, really cool. Don't get it twisted though. The fact that he co-owns it doesn't mean he owns me. I can call him a bald fuck all I want. I can already see the comments under this video. No, this is not how it works. Anyway, <laughs> he had to step away from his leadership positions from all of these companies True. because they didn't want to associate with him anymore. As this was all happening, yet another company decided to cut ties with him, although temporarily, and that's Twitch. Yeah, they decided two weeks. to ban him for two weeks following his comments on Palestine. He then made a video outlining his plans moving forward, that he was going to get his life together, that he was finally going to clean his messy ass house, that he realizes that he's become an unpleasant person in his opinion the more he spent time online, and that he was reached out to by the very same people he called inferior and they were very open to not only forgive him but to have a conversation. So we'll see what he ends up doing. However, um, I do, I didn't react to the, the video, his video response, like <clears throat> this plans moving forward. Because I, I felt like this was something very personal of his and reacting to it would be stupid. So I, I just left a message in the comments and congratulated him on his much needed vacation and to keep going because he's a great creator and everybody makes mistakes. 
As people finally got what they wanted and Asmongold was banned, the conversation shifted to other streamers on Twitch that have said things that were just as bad, actually, if not way worse, way worse than what actually. he had said about Palestinians Absolutely. that were not yet banned. And if anything, like the person that called that put a bounty on his head in April, were encouraged by the platform itself. Most people, of course, were referring to Hassan Abi, the same yeah. streamer who had spoken to Asmongold after his rant. Why? Well, you only need a couple of examples. On January 2024, a few months after the attacks of October 7th, Hassan brought on a Houthi pirate from Yemen to talk on his stream through a video call. He asked him questions about the conflict in Israel and Palestine, about his opinion on numerous things, and of course, if he watches anime, to which the Houthi said, I watch One Piece. Hassan loved the answer, his community loved the answer, and of course, this got memed. Hassan was heavily criticized by many on Twitch, people who weren't even political in nature. And yet Twitch pretended like it didn't happen. They had So yeah, Twitch at the time did nothing, but nowadays like a lot of uh anti-Semitism organizations find found out about this. This went uh viral and now people are calling for Dan Clancy's res resignation over this. Cause like this is a, a blatant uh it goes against Twitch rules, but I think it even goes against international rules of like harboring terrorists and delivering their messages on, uh, pu on public media um, completely without any uh, uh, repercussions. I think this goes way above Twitch and this has been even directed at Amazon and being questioned everywhere. This is insane. Had nothing to say about it. Let me tell you why that's a big deal. On January 17th, yep. around the same exact time Hassan was interviewing the Houthi pirate from Yemen, the U.S. Department of State designated the Houthis as a terrorist organization. That's because they were attacking commercial ships moving along the Red Sea. They were hindering global trade and attacking innocent people on those vessels that had nothing to do Damn. with the Israel and Palestine war. Twitch's terms of service very specifically outlines a section dubbed terrorism and violent extremism in which they say that terrorism and violent extremism promote unlawful violence and spread messages of intolerance. Twitch does not allow content that depicts, glorifies, encourages, or supports terrorism or violent extremist actors or acts. By the way, like I was saying, I think Twitch has to have that rule. I think this is an universal rule for a website of this kind to even operate. I don't think this is like just a Twitch benefit or a twitch specific rule i think this is pretty much uh something that everybody has to do so like twitch is not you know being a, a nice to have this policy this policy should be observed by all websites of this nature and the fact that hassan got away with it is insane this includes threatening to or encouraging others to commit acts that would result in serious physical harm or significant property destruction for example you may not want to display or link terrorist or extremist propaganda, including graphic pictures or footage of terrorist or extremist violence, even for the purposes of denouncing such content. So Hassan has successfully promoted a terrorist organization as outlined by the U.S. Department of State. True. I should add that he asked him very softball questions such as, do you know what KFC is and do you watch anime? This wasn't really journalism, it was just glorifying revolutionaries like he does all the time. He would also and it, it, you, the rule is very clear, you should not even be able to do this if you're denouncing the, this such content, he wasn't denouncing anything. He was promoting it, which is just absolutely crazy. He should have been banned for life if he wasn't Dan Clancy's friend. Uh, this is like unhinged. Fying revolutionaries like he does all the time. He would also show his friend on stream, Nick Pollum, footage, literal footage. Which, by the way, is also a part of OTK. So Nick Pollum also known as NMP Law, is a part of OTK. And he was unaware of what was going on, and Hassan just made him watch stuff that promoted a terrorist. ...of the Houthis taking over these ships in the Red Sea. I mean, look at this. A group of people that are like, no, we care about the Palestinians, we don't want you bombing them, so we're going to fucking take action, and we're going to try to punish you economically to the best of our ability. And they, and by God, they started doing that and they were doing it real well. So 
this is this is promotion. And by God, they were doing it, and they were yeah. doing it real well, guys. Twitch said in their terms of service, <clears throat> don't show this stuff even if you're gonna denounce it. Not only is he showing it here, but he's, he's promoting not denouncing it. it. If anything, he's glorifying yep. it. Yep. But I think the most interesting thing in all this is what happened in regards to Asmongol. During his segment with Ethan Klein, Hassan sat there and pretty much insinuated that China did Tibet a favor by erasing their culture. Giving the idea that, yes, their culture is inferior. You can even see Ethan making fun of him, like, oh yeah, China did them a favor, didn't they? And he wasn't going against that narrative. Watch. Tibet was literally a feudal uh, slave uh, mandate, uh, uh, in, like, so autonomous China was, zone. So China did them a favor. That was one, I mean, in America, when I say something like this, people get very upset. You know, we, we talk about the Dalai Lama saying, suck my tongue or whatever, but like, that's not far from the norm in normal Tibetan no. existence before the Communist Party came in and, and so China took over. unilaterally took over Tibet. Like well, these are their culture. They basically are trying to, you know, homogenize the culture. If your culture They're it, trying to squell the religion and the, the, part, the identity. The part of the part of feudal warlords favor. and this clip made people draw parallels with what Asmund Gold said. True. How come Hassan can sit there and say that the Tibet people deserve to have their culture erased due to a couple of bad things yep. in their past and not face any consequences? At this point, this was clear favoritism, but it wasn't just limited to Hassan, it also stretched out to everyone who orbited around him. Like that yeah, his cronies. Houthi that he brought on his stream. The same Houthi that Hassan had given a platform had posted on Twitter, a man getting impaled. It's a drawing, don't worry. But regardless, it's still a man getting impaled through his ass to his- And he does say, the execution that we will carry out on all Zionists. So he's basically making an allusion to what he intends to do to a group of people through the drawing. This is unhinged. His mouth, and the caption reads, The execution yeah. will carry out on all Zionists. Now the Houthi does have a Twitch account. He was banned on there after this tweet, created an alt account signaling ban evasion, which is against Twitch TOS. That account got banned too. And then after 12 hours, both of those accounts got unbanned. Listen, you have to understand how crazy this is, okay? Making an alt account is ban evasion. Ban evasion is usually very strictly carried out by Twitch, but in this case, it was given a massive exception. This was all happening as the Asmongold stuff was happening too. Hassan was confronted- That, that is deranged, you know? Like, Twitch goes above and beyond against its own rules to benefit Hassan and anyone associated with him. And everybody knows that. Everybody's calling that out. About this, of course. And his response was, well, hey, at least the drawing he posted wasn't of a Jew, so I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> That's because the man getting impaled on the drawing looked African, so this was nothing more than a very big deflection. This again renewed questions over Hassan's influence and the things he's been doing to this platform. But we were also starting to understand where this favoritism was coming from. Dan Clancy, shortly after taking over as CEO of Twitch, had an interview with Bloomberg. And here's what we discovered in that interview. Not a gamer himself, Clancy mostly watches musicians or talk shows on Twitch. He particularly enjoys leftist political commentator Hassan uh -huh, Piper, there, there who has 2.5 million followers of the platform. There it is, dude. I like the frankness and bluntness, Clancy said. He's comfortable saying what he believes. I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about whether Hassan's streams are worth watching or not. Again, I'm here to be objective. All I can say is that eight months after this interview, Hassan brought a Houthi Yemeni on his stream, directly breaking the terms of service on Twitch.tv and didn't get that banned for it. That is insane. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering <clears throat> what kind of streamers Dan Clancy follows on his own website, this is a clip from him showing the upcoming features on the Twitch app on mobile where you have a function that works like Instagram stories. These are all the streamers he follows. <laughs> Interesting. I kind of so this is why um, Twitch doesn't ban the e thoughts, the girls advertising their OnlyFans because Dan Clancy follows them. That's why he hates VTubers, but he will follow the e thoughts that he creates rules to um, try to prevent them from you know s scaring advertisers away. But they still do it anyway get banned for a day and then come back, that's because he follows them. See a pattern. <laughs> now, what brought us today to this breaking point that we are at, this existential threat that Twitch is facing, is the ecosystem that was fostered by Hassan and his community. One of the main people of interest is Frogan, 
a partner Twitch streamer, and someone who is considered a- Bro, I am sorry. This lady is gross. She's absolutely gross in everything she does. I recently watched a, a 32 minute video telling all of her story, all of her story, and it's absolutely crazy all she has done. That that could be the theme of another video because it's so extensive. But bro, trust me, she, I, I, she is absolutely disgusting. I can't cannot believe that it took this long for she to see any punishment. The th the things this this lady has done are insane close friend when it comes to Hassan. In mid-2024, Ludwig was organizing a charity for Palestine for the people affected by the war. He said he was going to contribute $10,000 of his own money. Frogan's response? Calling him a slur for white people and saying you can keep your 10k, we don't want it. All while she has an emergency rent donation goal at the bottom of her stream. Now, even though Ludwig is considered- That's not the- that, that, that's like the least of the, the ranged things she did. That's not even close to the worst ones that she has done. That next to the other thing she did is, is like uh, just the tip of the iceberg. She made a, a donation goal of a certain amount in which she would recreate 9-11 using uh, cakes. Like not cre recreate the buildings, recreate the buildings get getting struck by the plane. This, this person is absolutely insane. To be one of Hassan's close friends, Hassan vehemently defended Frogan's usage of the word cracker here, even though she literally is begging for money to pay her rent and hasn't done anything when it comes to yeah. donating to Palestinians, Ludwig was giving away $10,000 of his personal money while encouraging his entire community to donate as well. I don't think you need to be a genius to look at this objectively and realize how ridiculous, how much of a farce this all is. Of course, she suffered no consequences. No of one course did not. in this case. A trend continued by Twitch. Recently, just on October 20th, 2024, Frogan, yet again with another controversial take, saying that she hopes all American soldiers get PTSD and get denied access to healthcare live on her stream. Yeah, that's... Uh, sugar bro, this. It's... She literally said every word. Watch. I have no pity I, I... for any fucking soldiers. Distress, thank you so much. I will never have any fucking pity for any fucking soldiers. The U.S. military, who fucking who? I hope you get PTSD. I hope you get PTSD. And I hope you get no health insurance when you get back into the fucking America. There were no immediate consequences after she had said this, and if anything, it brought attention to her very problematic past associated with Twitch. Yep. It turned out that Frogan was a part of something called the Arabs Podcast. And I, I don't know if he's gonna bring up what I just said about the the, the donation goal of uh, 9/11. I don't know if that uh, is included in the video, but yeah, like she has so many events of like stuff that are completely perma perma bannable that it's insane that she she has lasted this long. And if you go to Hassan's stream today, he has her Patreon links, even though she's banned, so you can donate to her, which is ban evasion. And then Clancy does nothing about it. So this is not something that's in the past. This is happening right now. Latest TwitchCon back in September of 2024, very recently, they held a panel approved by Twitch in which they had an ethnicity tier list. I'm not even joking. I'm not even making this up. This is real. The whole premise of this was how would a streamer react about saying the word Habibi? And they had a bunch of streamers ready with the rankings consisting of Arab Arab coded, asks permission to say Habibi, thinks Habibi is a slur and wouldn't want to say it, and the last tier being loves Sabra. So of course, Hassan is placed as Arab. I mean, why wouldn't he be? Everyone here loves him and the attention he gives them. A bunch of random streamers that have nothing to do with this. Like, <laughs> I don't even know why this is a thing, guys. Don't even ask me. And of course, you have the tier saying loves Sabra. Now, what is Sabra? According to Israelis, Sabra hummus is the most popular hummus brand in Israel. Everyone there has it in their fridge. I think it's fairly straightforward to assume that Luf Sabra means Israeli, alright? But it also has a very unfortunate double meaning. 
Sabra also means a Jew born in Israel. So whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised, but it definitely doesn't help their case. This is practically an ethnicity tier list in which the top is Arab and the bottom is Jewish. <laughs> that is ridiculous, bro. You can see the sponsors right here. That is right so here. racist. Capcom, Chevron, Samsung. You can see TwitchCon. This was signed off by Twitch to be on stage. This was streamed at TwitchCon. This was an event at TwitchCon with people sitting in the audience watching. Imagine that. Like, imagine word of this getting out and this becoming public knowledge and going viral. How that affects the image of Twitch and of the, all the companies that sponsored the event. Like, I don't even know how Dan Clancy still has his job at this moment. I have no idea how that that's possible. Like, uh, in any other business, this would, you know, cause a huge, huge change in a business. How the hell did this happen? I don't understand. How can this oversight happen like this? This just shows you how much of a mess Twitch is. And yet here they were ranking people based on ethnicity. I just can't believe, <laughs> I just can't believe this. And you know what the funny thing is? Even if you were Arab, you probably would not want to be a part of this or associate with people like this. Absolutely. Because this is just cringe. What the hell is this? I mean, you have a literal Jew, Ethan Klein right here in Love Subra. Like, come on, man, that's crazy. Speaking of Ethan Klein, he's actually been the biggest critic of Twitch and the CEO regarding all this stuff we've talked about in this video so far. When he saw this tier list, he was outraged. And even though at some point he and Hassan were on great terms, he had a lot of criticism towards his behavior and the people he's promoting. And to many, he was seen in the right. His opinion was warranted. This was crazy. He was saying in his title of his latest podcast, Dan Clancy must resign as Twitch CEO. He also commented on how Hassan reacted to this tier list and had nothing but positive things to say about it. I think I should mention here that Ethan doesn't even consider himself to be a Zionist. He's against Israel's actions, but the only thing he doesn't want is the 8 million Jews born in Israel to not be expelled out of the country. This means that the only thing he and Hassan disagree on is the 8 million Jews point. But still, he's being treated like an outcast and put at the bottom of the ethnicity tier list. The objective question to ask here is, if Asmongold had done a tier list with Israeli on top and Palestinian on the bottom, would he have gotten banned, yes or no? He would have There's gotten banned because not being in Hassan's group, doing the stuff that Hassan's group does is a ban. It's clear bias at Twitch now towards the whole Palestine and Israel conflict. And as you thought that things could not get worse, it turned out that Ynet, a pretty popular news outlet in Israel, came out with a report saying that Twitch had blocked anyone in Israel from creating a new Twitch account ever since October 13th. That's October 13th, 2023, by the way. So it's been over a year. Damn. Some people tried switching to a VPN to Israel and they would get the same thing. The IP was immediately blocked from account creation. This is the error code you would see. Error description, blocked country IP. It turned out that ever since them blocking account creation in Israel, people have been reaching out to Twitch support asking, hey, is this normal? And Twitch would reply with something like this. I'm really sorry that you're having issues creating an account. We have reviewed your case thoroughly and can confirm that, unfortunately, you are not eligible to create a Twitch account. As a result, we will be closing your case at this time, explaining absolutely nothing about the situation and just brushing it off and closing the ticket. This was so big that the Times of Israel picked up this story as well, confirming that yes, users in Israel could not create an account. The Jerusalem Post picked up the story as well, echoing the same things that were said in Ynet and the Times of Israel. A streamer by the name of Dan Can't Stream has made it his life's mission to go after Twitch and prove that they did this deliberately and that this wasn't just a mistake. He says that as early as May 2024, there was a small ignored effort with the hashtag Batluath Twitch, which aimed to get Twitch to answer why they could not create accounts from Israeli creators. While we're talking about this, I should mention that this wasn't just related to Israeli citizens, this was also related to Palestinian territories such as the West Bank and Gaza. So this accusation was pretty damn big, right? Twitch, and especially its parent company Amazon, does not want to be perceived as anti-Semitic, but that was exactly how people were perceiving them now. So not even And like I think Twitch is giving an excuse here because I think Dan Clancy himself was probably unaware of this. While I do think that he gives Hassan and his cronies a free pass, I think that the people that were responsible for like security on the website are even more unhinged than Dan Clancy 
and are even more progressive and you know uh, pro-Palestine than Clancy himself and they were doing this behind his back that's my opinion because there's no absolute there's absolutely no way that a CEO would be comfortable with this so I think this was done on his back and he wasn't aware of this even a day after these accusations just my opinion. surfacing, Twitch support made a tweet. We wanted to address concerns we've seen about whether we're preventing Twitch account signups in some regions. When signing up for a Twitch account, you can select an account verification method. Email this is a complete bullshit, by the way. Protection. Following the October 7, 2023 attacks, we temporarily disabled signups with the email verification in Israel and Palestine. We did this to prevent uploads of graphic That's a material lie. related to the attack and to protect the safety of users. Signups were not disabled, and we continue to see signups from both regions. Users could choose to sign up with phone verification. We've learned that, inadvertently, we did not re-enable email verification signups for either region. I'm just going to interrupt this tweet real quick to mention something. This argument falls apart when you realize that they didn't do this when Russia invaded Ukraine. They didn't do this to Yemen, they didn't do this to Lebanon, and they didn't do this to Myanmar. True. A bunch of countries currently at war. Anyway, let's continue. We deeply regret this unacceptable miss and the confusion it has caused. We fixed the issue, meaning all affected users can sign up with email verification. We've also heard concerns about whether our community guidelines apply to all content on our service. We continue to enforce our rules as consistently as possible and are actively reviewing content and taking enforcement action where needed. This was also a lie. It wasn't just email verification. It was a, 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 a countrywide IP ban. So no matter what kind of like verification you had, if it was email or cell phone or whatever, you wouldn't be able to create an account to begin with. So this is a, 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 a lie as well. So this last paragraph was in reference to Frogan and her panel at TwitchCon with the ethnicity tier list as well as Hassan. But they were pretty much saying that, oh, don't worry, only email verification was disabled, phones still worked, we still received signups. However, as you can see right here, they got community noted. Both email registration and phone registration were Yeah, blocked. it was a countrywide IP block. Stream yet again, coming up with a tweet disproving Twitch, saying, hey, Dan Clancy, about mobile signups still working thing, sure it doesn't f***ing seem like it. Thank God we took recordings before you did damage control, attaches a video showing that mobile signup was not working in Israel, saying, resign anti-Semite to Dan Clancy. So in this video, as you can see, there's going to be a phone number put in, and it doesn't work. The code never arrives. Dan himself quote tweeted the Twitch support tweet saying we just posted an explanation of what happened on Twitch support. Please look at this tweet. Very sorry about this oversight. It only came to our attention today. As mentioned in the tweet, it did not affect people using mobile phone verification. Again, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was occurred. done on his back, but he's trying so out of hand that even the he's trying to lie about it. Like he probably found out about this once people started complaining, but like he tried to lie about it. He did damage control and did not address what actually happened, which just makes him look even worse. The defamation League, an American organization made to stop the defamation of Jewish people, had to reach out directly to Twitch to ask for answers and to express their disappointment. This is what And only after ADL got involved that Frogan was banned. Before ADL got involved, Frogan wasn't banned. Uh, the bans only came out after ADL started uh, punching Twitch. One things took a turning point. Look, objectively speaking, when the ADL reaches out to you out of concern as a company, it means that unless you change your course of action, you're about to lose every single sponsor on God's green earth. True. So Twitch is now in full damage control mode. They immediately reissued a ban on the Houthi Yemeni's Twitch channel. He usually streamed things like Rocket League, right? But this time, I think it's permanent. And they banned every single streamer on the Twitch-sponsored yep. panel. Let me just yep. remind you, this was at TwitchCon. But every single streamer here, including Frogan and Denims, the person who that, that was, was when they actually banned, got banned for 30 days. This is oh, th this is cute, by the way. The person that uh, put a bounty on Asmund's head was on this panel. Just so you know how nice of a person that is. She was on this panel and she only got banned because of the panel. The fact that she put a bounty on another streamer's head was never, you know, punished at all. This is not a permanent ban. This is a 30-day ban. 
Now, people were wondering how an oversight like this could happen. Almost a year of people in Israeli and Palestinian territories not able to create an account truly made people wonder if this was an oversight or if it was done on purpose. Well, Twitch had a lot of layoffs in the beginning of the year, 500 employees, and Dan Can's stream pretty much revealed that most of these layoffs were on the trust and safety team and were relocated to a cheaper location, which is Egypt, a country that doesn't famously have a friendly relationship with Israel. So Dan's theory is that this was why the trust and safety team was so anti-Israel because true. they were Egyptians. I, 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 this I do, was all happening. Oh, I, I do think that that is legit, legitimate. I do think that um, it wasn't Dan Clancy's doing. I do think this was probably the trust and safety department's doing. Uh, it, it does sound like someone uh, with direct action upon it. Uh, that kind of department would do something like this without the CEO even ever getting to know about it. So I do believe that's true. Site by the name of DanClancySucks.com got made, hoping to get him fired, saying Dan Clancy's Twitch is an anti-Semitic hellhole, showing you clips of Ethan Klein complaining about this ethnicity tier list they had at TwitchCon, how they banned Israeli and Palestinian accounts, Hassan's many cases of problematic behavior. True. About how Dan Clancy enjoys watching Hassan. So yes, while the ethnicity tier list streamers got banned for 30 days, Hassan still has not been touched. The reason why so many are pushing for his ban is for fairness, is for, in their eyes, justice. Keep in mind that um, Twitch would never ban Hassan right now because of the 2024 election in the United States. Like... Banning Hassan right now would mean such a massive hit for him that he would like if even if he even got threatened to get banned, he would probably uh crawl on his knees all the way to the Twitch office to beg not to get banned because of the elections. I do think that if Twitch is gonna do something against him, they're gonna do it after the election to let him stream the election, which is like uh his whole focus. Because Dan Clancy is such a big fan of his, right? Um, so I see either personally, I said there are two things happening. Either he gets banned after the election and this gets swept under the rug so Dan Clancy can keep his job, or Dan Clancy doesn't do anything and Dan Clancy gets fired. Th those are the only two things that I see happening. Uh, they're basically just trying to get past the election for Dan to ban Hassan given to the you know public pressure but if Dan doesn't ban Hassan Dan will get fired that's what I think will happen many are hoping that now after the ADL and stop anti-semitism and many other Jewish organizations reached out to twitch that we would finally see changes when it comes to their very inconsistent bans that have much favoritism nope, you're never, attached to them we're Remember never gonna see twitch? we're never gonna see change in the Dan Clancy it's not gonna happen he favors the thoughts, he favors the Hassanabi heads, he favors uh, the, those groups of people, and as long as he's the CEO, nothing will change. Uh, what needs to happen on Twitch is that we need to change the, the CEO and the whole department responsible for bans. The whole department responsible for uh, making sure streamers are doing the right thing. That's what needs to happen. Otherwise, there will never be change on Twitch. They have to mention Amazon, their parent company, and I'm sure Amazon does not want to have problems with people like the Anti-Defamation League. More importantly though, this all happened under Dan Clancy's leadership. And it remains to be seen whether Amazon will force him to resign or whether he'll walk away scot-free. The fact that this is being picked up by a lot of the media is showing that this is going to have a very negative impact on Twitch's reputation. And yeah, absolutely. Like, this will basically drive away a lot of advertisers and make Twitch that has never been profitable even more of a loss in a loss situation. Absolutely. This will 100% affect sponsors. People on Twitter are emailing and contacting sponsors like crazy. Everybody's making sure sponsors know what's going on at Twitch. This is this this now became public domain. Like there is no way out. Um something has to happen. There, like there has to be some sort of a consequence here. I don't think he can get away from this. And Amazon will definitely be keeping an eye out on that. Let's see what happens.
But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you watched till the end, I love you so much. You're awesome. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Love you. What a great video. But yeah, guys, uh, again, I don't have a lot of reaction videos uh, lined up because this is a very slow month for gaming. And as one is banned, I'd like to react to his con content most of the time. Ubisoft is basically dead. All the games that have come out, we already know are DI and crap. So there's nothing on the horizon. But I hope you enjoyed this one. And if I do have anything else to bring up, I'll do react to it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.